Hello YouTube, welcome to my devlog for the project codenamed Wayward Rise. I'm not sure if that name is going to stick or not. We will see. First, let's go over all of the things that I've done this week, which I don't think I've done that many, because I've been distracted by life, and I've wanted to make prototypes so I could figure out how things worked. Uh, first, we have the hair. That should be the most obvious difference from last time. The hair is color-coded based on the same color as the lotus up in the left corner. And if we change the world with my magic blue grass powers, her hair changes. If we give up more of the world, it will move more through it. I'm not sure the colors are right. The yellow seems to be weird. Green looks fine. Red looks fine. Orange is okay. This color is really nice. I'm going to start getting into things around here, and I'm surprised the game didn't crash. So for the way I had coded it, it would have thrown an exception when the entire level was all the same at the end. Yeah, I've also added this tree, which does a whole lot of nothing. I've kind of run into a problem. I have this point where I know how I should be getting there, but the pieces along the way are a little bit missing or not well thought out. Like, this whole tree is great, but it's weird to just pull it out of your pocket and have a giant tree out of it. So I made this little sapling. The sapling to the tree is still not good enough, I don't think. Also, I can make holes in the ground now. There's no animation for this. I, I really like making the animations. It seems like I spend a lot of time making character work and... Well, the puzzle part of this doesn't really lend itself to character work, so I tend to get discouraged by some of it. And at the same time, I get excited about how the thing's going to end up, but we're not there yet. Just make myself some more holes over here. Now, we need to get water inside here. The whole point of making holes is to trap some of the water that came out of the world. Of which I am flooding the entire thing, and that's interesting. I haven't tested that a whole lot. I just made sure it could go in there, and I put a nice strip of land up. More importantly, if I get rid of the rain, get rid of the flooding of the world, it should stay. But there we go. Another problem I've had is collision. Like, this part of the world I can just walk over. I can walk over pretty much everything. I figured that one of the best ways to work out collision would be to make a little prototype. But first, I have the hitbox here. The hitbox was made up of a bunch of different parts so that I could detect where she was hitting things. But right now it just is used for the edge of the world and it's really not very useful to to me like this because there are holes in it there there's no point in having a giant multi-segment hitbox if it's just going to be like a a single thing and it doesn't match her body at all she's moving back and forth and the hitbox is staying perfectly still i actually built a prototype inside the game you i used a lot of the assets and i just grabbed some off the internet really quickly let's go jump at that 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 resets the level there we go. Made myself a little platformer. Sort of. I really like making silly things, so she's on the ground right here. And we can jump over here. Sort of. Ever so slowly. It's an inchworm drive. Now she has the same kind of movement as the other one does, except with gravity. And the animations are different. One of the things I wanted to do as well is to build levels. And an open world doesn't really lend itself to levels. I want to build progression. I want to make my character grow and survive and feel like you're actually progressing through the game. Where with the, the big world, we have the world progresses. But in here, we jump over here and grab this. 
Copy Metroid a bit, and suddenly we can walk. Got myself a little upgrade. Jump. I can actually run instead of doing an inchworm thing. Uh, one of the game types I've always wanted to make is a Metroidvania type game. And if I have a prototype that lets me test out different aspects of how I need to make the game, then maybe I might end up with something complete by the end. It's a little mini game inside this game. If we look at the hitbox on this character, I am showing the wrong side. <laughs> okay, uh, pretend that the red points are where it's supposed to be on the other side. So if we run over here, we have a whole bunch of them checking for collision, like with the wall. The yellow point at the bottom is a ray to see where the... <sighs> it's like gravity. It checks downward, and it checks how much down there is. So I can actually check inside of objects. I can check all pretty much anywhere in front of me for anything that's in the way. And the green hitbox is great because we can take the little slime that's over there, and if we run into that with our hitbox, then it will it will interact with that without needing to be constantly checking for everything that's nearby. It'll just be two overlapping boxes. Or circles, as it were. I believe that's a circle. Anyway. So this is what I've done this week. I will probably have quite a bit more done next week due to having all of the character controlling I need worked out and the pieces will start falling into place as I see what's missing and what needs built up. So thank you all for watching and we'll see you again next time.